Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. to forage for wild mushrooms is not just a beginner sport. It's a very important way of foraging for food that we need. We will be identifying some of these uh, mushrooms today and we're talking about a special book with Eric Garden. What's the book today? Yeah, this is How to Forage for Mushrooms Without Dying by Frank Hyman, which I think is a pretty simplistic uh, idea, but Frank does a great job of teaching us how to do that and we're going to talk a little about that. Yes, and you can find it here at the Wellfield in their visitor's cottage. But we want to talk, first of all, Eric, why are we in this circle? Yeah, this is, a, this is a great spot. This is called our council ring. It's sometimes called a council circle and it's a, a traditional in, in some Native American uh, cultures to have this space where see everyone can be seated around yeah. no one is more important than the other and you're all right there equidistant apart but we're here in the woodland conservation garden and you can see that behind us yes. well you know and it is important to notice that sometimes you might even hear some echoes this is built so that everybody can hear everybody else, particularly the person that's in the center that's talking. Right. That's right. So um, Eric is the executive director here, here, and so I did mention the book. They could find it here in yeah. the visitors. There, it's cottage. available in a lot of different places. You can find it online, but we do actually carry it here at Wellfield in the visitors cottage. It is a very nice book. It, yep. it it's made simple and uh, makes this whole era simple and this field uh, of mushrooms very, very understandable. Uh, so we don't consciously grow mushrooms here That's right. to forage. That's right. But what do we have going on here? Because of this space, and this is the largest garden at Wellfield, it's about three acres, and it is a native Indiana uh, woodland, it's an upland, that it consists largely of hickory and oak trees. And over the yeah. years, we've been reestablishing that with native species, but we also have a lot of dead standing and dead and down trees that mushrooms and fungus love. And we're at the right time of year for some fungus, just not the ones that we want to eat. Right, right, right. It's a little too early, yep. but you know so much about this and you found great mushrooms in South Bend. Yeah, I went to the, one of our favorite places to go is the Saigon Market. You can also find them at the South Bend Farmer's Market. There's a, a mushroom grower there. And, but the Saigon Market has a, a bunch of different types. Um, some similar like oyster mushrooms that we can actually- He's got a wonderful collection We can actually here. find these in the woods. And here is an oyster mushroom. And it's in our book as well. And Absolutely. It grows on? It grows on a tree. Yes. You can actually see where it would attach. And then these are the the, is... uh, the mushrooms. And when we talk about what is a mushroom, you know, there are thousands of different species of fungus. And what we're really talking about when we think of a mushroom is that fruiting body at the, at the top of the stalk. Mm -hmm. That's what most people think of. And obviously this book focuses on 29 very common ones that you're going to find around. And so it, uh, it also talks a lot about what you shouldn't be eating. Right. And, if, and if you're unsure, the rule is if you don't want to get poisoned, don't even attempt it. But as you said, you want to make sure you're going with someone that you trust, who has been doing this for a while, and that knows these characteristics. So that's what makes this book special too, is this book actually focuses on Look at some of these. these characteristics are that are not subjective. Mm -hmm. So when they, some books talk about the smell and other things like that, that's subjective. We want to go with those very definitive characteristics yeah. because if I'm out there and I'm not an expert, I want to know what some of these things are. 
The book is compact. It's an excellent field guide. It's got photos and it doesn't even list them in, in alphabetical order. It talks about where you might find them and the seasons. And so it's, it's arranged in a different way than any other book that I've seen. And I, it's one it's, of my it's, it's wonderful. It's simple. And he throws in these little, these, uh, uh, little aphorisms and things about if, if the mushroom is hollow you can swallow things of that nature but you do have to know the mushrooms you can't just walk out in the woods and say oh I'm gonna get this one and we'll put it in and start cooking that just doesn't work so you're starting on I some vegetables getting Tell some us vegetables what you're doing. going and it's making me think about what I'm gonna put into this and we've got this king mushroom right here that I'm gonna shred up and that's gonna be one of the things that's going into my kind of an Asian inspired poke bowl or Korean uh, rice bowl. I'm gonna do kind of a combination of those things, but because I'm vegetarian, I'm doing all mushrooms with this. It's an excellent substitute it for me. It is, it really excellent. is. And you know, that's a point. People say, well, how do you know you, you're gonna get through your meal without dying? I mean, you might even pick up the wrong mushroom thinking it is the right one, but you have you have mushrooms, like you say, it's important they t to take care of them. Don't That's leave right. them out in the kitchen overnight. And when you do buy them, put them in a paper bag. That is the safest. No glass containers, no plastic, in a paper bag. Because you can have a perfectly safe mushroom, and if it's left out overnight... That's right. It turns out that a lot of poisonings are don't come from a poisonous mushroom. They come from edible mushrooms that have been handled poorly. So when you talk about food safety, this is exactly the place that you want to do that. It really is food safety. You want no. to handle them right and you should absolutely use uh, the fridge. Make sure they're refrigerated and as you said, you don't want to put them in a place or in a situation where the bacteria have a chance to uh, really get excited. I have a very important question to ask. Is this burner on? I'm going to make sure that it is. It just seems so quiet. Now we're now, gonna now we're going to be cooking with gas. Like, yes, right. Because I thought this was pretty quiet. This uh, camp stove has been a been a good one out here for us. I have some bell mushrooms. They're very common. You know the button mushrooms, the belly. You've got the great variety. Yeah. So that, you've you've got some chopped up already, uh, but this is a yeah. shiitake, and I thought this would be a good one to actually show. And I'm going to put mine in here and get it started. You can see how the gills are under there. So this talks about the different gill patterns, and uh, it, it gives again very definitive characteristics yes. that what, what even do the if gills you, do these are just part of the part of the structure that allow for a gas exchange on a on a on a fungus and these mushrooms in particular are just a, a really great one these are excellent for uh, substitute for meat because they're firm they actually are uh, uh, they're even a little bit chewy you can marinate them you can do a lot of different things with them I'm so glad that you found those uh, so I'm adding some shiitake to the bella and uh, we're gonna cook them up. I'm going to fry an egg in here with it, add some spinach, some potatoes, and it's like a meal, those big meals you can exactly. buy at a, at a store, uh, at a restaurant. By the way, what do you like to, how do you season your mushrooms? What do you like to do? Well, actually it depends on what I'm putting it in, but I like salt and pepper. Yep, and I do like a little bit of that fiery uh, red sauce. I have some powdered at home. It's called Slap Your Mama, and uh, I like a little kick in with eggs. That's that's a good that's a good thing too. And I I've what discovered like? I've discovered that with mushrooms it really depends on the mushroom. Uh, but what I used to do is I used to put a lot of garlic in with it. But then oh. I started appreciating the flavor of the mushrooms, yeah. and so I realized I need to start just enjoying that. And so a little salt, a little pepper to bring the flavors out. Uh, but I've avoided the I don't do so much with the. Uh, salt or the garlic anymore. I just use a little bit of butter and that really helps. When you want to get the taste of a specific item, uh, garlic sometimes can be overwhelming, yeah. but it also adds a fine taste to certain dishes that you love. Yep, now, that's for sure. To cook out in the woods, this is a great way to do it. The thing is you can, if you have real potatoes, it's going to take a while. So we bought some uh, already cooked potatoes and we'll put them in here with the mushrooms. And I'm going to have, I'm actually going to have a little uh, spring onion sliced in here. And we're going to cook this up. Um, the, the, the point of this book, too, is 
to make you aware that mushrooms are edible, they're great, but you must show common sense and, as I say, know what you're doing That's or right. just don't eat the mushrooms. Uh, so, whoop, got a little breeze out here. So in any case, the um, mushrooms are cooking. I would say maybe 10 minutes. We'll cook them at the most. And I want to put a little salt and pepper. And uh, let's see. I could even do some more here. That looks fantastic. Now, what? tell us what you all have in so here. So we've got some uh, oyster mushrooms here. And we also have, they're very similar these are actually called these are called hen of the woods so an, a one popular mushroom for foraging out here is chicken of the woods this is different than that so this is similar uh similar to an oyster mushroom that we've got here and uh but this is definitely it's it's a little more tender oh it's it's beautiful i can see it yeah. even an arrangement on a table yeah it's, they were called metaki at the store but they mm -hmm. are also i know that they're hen and of the, the people wood. in the stores will talk to you about your mushrooms and how to prepare them absolutely what to do with them uh so uh we do want to uh, talk a little bit too about uh, what you carry with you in the woods the good thing is to have a basket to put your mushrooms in so the dirt can fall off the mushrooms yeah, that's right. as you're walking along. And but they also have things you should buy. You should have a brush. Love that. To brush off the dirt. And they're uh, pretty delicate. They are. And some people think, well don't wash them. Well get it. You wash those mushrooms if they're dirty. Yep. And we're gonna take just a little break right now. We want to show you our mush our mushrooms. And we want to show you our menu and then we'll be right back. Hello. Our book today is How to Forage for Mushrooms Without Dying. And uh, I think that's a good conversation starter, I think isn't it's it? A, I think it's a really good. There are so many fungus out there. Yes. And when we're talking about fungus, there are thousands of different species. And a lot of them have evolved over time to take up the decomposing material, all the dead stuff they that work. we have. They we'd work. They work for us. If we didn't have fungus, yeah. we'd have... We'd be neck deep in the last half billion years of plant material. Plant goo all That's over. That's right. Yes. And we, they also, some of them feed on, on uh, uh, live material. And then there are other fungus that actually are underground and really help kind of connect and enrich all of our plant materials. Those are called the mycorrhizal fungal. So they fungus. work for us. Absolutely. They absolutely work for us and we can eat them. But I have some nice pictures here of ones that you can eat. There are the wood ears, the chanterelle, and the oyster mushroom, the kind that you had that you're cooking yep. right here. And then you have some that are really deadly. Never, never, ever, uh, I've got to go back and look at these names. You don't ever want to try a death cap or a I think it's uh, right in the name Amanita that. That's good. or a, a rus Rusula. They're deadly. Or the angel. And I do have a family member that ate an angel and had to have his stomach pumped. And uh, at, the, uh, at the hospital when he was recuperating, they brought him cream of mushroom soup. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like a good thing. But I'm going to keep, keep cooking here. And let's talk a little bit about, again about some of the other mushrooms. Yeah, sure. And what you're going to do yeah. with that rice. That's right. So I'm kind of got a little Asian inspired bowl here, a little bit like a poke bowl, a little bit like a... Uh, bibimbap, the Korean, uh, where I've got some rice. I'm going to put some mushrooms in there, and I've got a mixture of three that we're doing here. We've got uh, the matake, the king, and also some oyster mushrooms in here. I'm going to add some Wonderful. edamame. I'm going to add some uh, sautéed peppers and onions that I made a little bit ago. And for the top, a little bit of seasoning. I really like a little seaweed on mine, too. Oh, you like a little seaweed. And Isn't some sesame nice? seeds and a little drizzle <laughs> of sesame seed oil. You know how to do it. You really do. Uh, and I'm just adding some fresh 
Okay. To some chopped fresh green pepper. I like a little crunch. It doesn't have to all be cooked uh, solidly. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add another a bit of butter. And we're going to do a, a quick uh, red wine sauce you can make with mushrooms for steak. And my my, my in-laws used to make this. And it really is good. And I see these tiny, these mushrooms cut up in little pieces and put in that same poke bowl. Uh, and it's, you can do anything with those bowls. That's right. You can put what you, you like in there. Yes. That's why I, that's why I love them. And they're great for family because everyone in the family can have a little bit different uh, ingredients if they don't like any of them specifically. Before I do that last one, I'm going to do scramble a few eggs and we're going to put that on top of the vegetables. And this really makes a wonderful camping dish or a dish your children can do uh, on the bal uh, balcony of your house, your, your uh, patio. And kids love to do this sort of stuff. Of course, you don't want them doing it when you're not at home. Uh, so we're, we're going to scramble it. You can also, you know, make it like a uh, sunny side egg. That's seen everywhere today that kind of cooking, but we're going to scramble. Sounds good. Back to that book, Gail. Uh, yeah. What were some other, did you have any other features you really liked in that in that book that's got beautiful photography in there? Well, once I, I looked at the graph and what each little figurine meant, I mean, it was obvious. Uh, I, a chunk out of a little man meant it was safe, and then uh, crossed eyes on a, on a little symbol meant it's deadly. And uh, I liked that. It was very, it was very simple, very easy to follow, and I liked his humor. Yeah. In in the book, he's right. he's very down to earth, and uh, and he he's kind of saying, I know you are a little worried, Gail Martin, about your mushrooms, and so I will hold your hand, and we will walk together. Yep. That on seems this. like a good, a wise thing. And I also, as a as a former biologist, I can really appreciate the fact that he talks about the Latin. And so he'll actually talk about what the Latin names mean. That way it gives you a better sense of what things really are. Uh, I, I just love that aspect of it as well. Well, and he has a famous saying, uh, I, have to, I have to write everything down. What is that he says about you have brave, brave men? Bold. Bold, you have bold mushroom hunters and you have old, but you never have old and bold because they don't make it that long That's if they're right. too bold and That's eat right. the wrong thing. This is gorgeous. I thought it was a nice, I thought it's a nice, nice color and you've got some different, th and again, these are all things that I like. I love mm -hmm. edamame, I mm -hmm. love green onions. We've got some sauteed onions and peppers and of course our mushroom trio right there, which just makes it all the better. I Add a little sesame too. seeds I on there too. I love those bowls. Those are amazing. How about sesame oil? You like sesame oil? Oh, I oil like too. it all. Do a little yes, drizzle of yes. that on there. And I'm just going to cook some in this butter and uh, add some red wine, salt, and pepper. And we will have it as a sauce that can be used. How much wine do you need? Because I've got, maybe we should. Oh, that's you right. Always, oh, you oh, should oh. always have. A little bit of Not more than a third, a, a third of a cup, there just a little bit toward the end. Okay. See how easy this is? I, I make it sound like I did this with my children. We did go camping, but we didn't later on. We never really cooked on the barbecue. Um, and uh, I've been doing more of that since I've been on dinner in a book. What are some of your uh, favorite moments from this book? I, again, I really like the, I really love the stories. Uh, that he talks about in there, but also just the safe handling, which are yes. things I think that people take for granted. And whenever they get, uh, whenever things get, a, you know, when you get worried, let's get you going here. I think I got fire off here, Gail. Where there we go. We're going now. We're going now. All right. Good. I got shiitakes in here. Excellent. And but but just in terms of being out and about and also appreciating nature, uh, you know. Be quiet. You never know what you're going to see when you're out in nature. And of course, here at Wellfield, we might always have people around. And I love the sound of happy kids, but I also love the sound of birds mm -hmm. in the trees above us. Yeah. You always have the sound of the geese, and which is. But you know, here nor and there. that's nice. This uh, it's the symphony of nature. That's right. That's so right. Uh, our eggs are ready. Our eggs, potatoes. I sh I could have put more in, but I didn't. And you're 
You're, oh, a little wine. Yes. I'm, you know what I can do? I can just pour that a little bit right in, in there here. If you'd like. Yeah. Red wine goes great with shiitakes. And I dribble all over. And can you smell that? That smells awesome. Oh, with butter and salt and pepper. And sometimes you can cut these mushrooms into smaller pieces. Uh, and my daughter-in-law is now cutting mushrooms into very small pieces and roasting them in the oven. And then she would put some in the bowl, like that's right a, in that corner great, or that that's corner. That's a great way to do it. And you can use any vegetable, you, salmon, yep, chicken. For sure. So, uh, so you're all done. I think well, those are those are looking pretty good right there. All right, and I love it. I, again, I love that oyster. Yeah. The way I, I saw it in the book, and so, here you and have this it. Is, this is one of my ways. Of, you don't want to ever seal the mushrooms. You know that's why they recommend keeping them in a paper bag so that they can they breathe a little bit. You don't want to ever give that bacteria a chance to multiply, and right. uh, if if there is any on there. So making sure that you keep it keep it aired, but also keeping it cool. And I like to keep kind of a plank or you know a wet paper towel in between them too. So are you going to be uh, cooking up mushrooms now for the next this, few this days? Might, this might be what uh, the family really enjoys. Yes. This. So how long do how long can you safely keep mushroom in the refrigerator? Do you know? I think that varies, but I think you want to watch them. You want to be really yeah. careful about them. But I think it is interesting to know yep. you never leave them out and you don't put them in plastic. Yep. So we're going to finish up here, tidy up. We're going to invite you to our woodland picnic. And so we'll be right back. Don't go away. We've heard everything today in the gardens. We've heard the birds, we've heard the trains, we've heard people talking. And uh, it's been a, a great day. The rain stayed away. And I just wanted to mention something, Eric, that I, I think, well, first of all, let's talk about the food. Here's the fruit. We have some fruit, blueberries and strawberries, and then eggs mixed with potatoes and cooked shiitake and uh, what was the other and, one? Oh, Bella, baby Bella. Yeah, it's good stuff. And I've got a, Kind of a combination poke and bibimbap Korean rice bowl where I've got some rice with a, a mushroom trio of king mushrooms. I've got some oyster mushrooms and some matake mushrooms with some green onions, some edamame, some sauteed onions and peppers, and of course a little bit of seaweed on the top there and some it's sesame great. seed and sesame oil. I love it. It is beautiful and I like that mushroom uh, symphony or whatever you said yeah. medley uh, and again we want to remind you when you are buying mushrooms keep them in paper bags yep. they will stay safe they will not spoil keep that in mind and another one is don't when you're out foraging don't bring the marching band with you this, this is what yeah. the author says yeah. the kids can run over the mushrooms people can walk all over them yeah. and they they don't always reappear because of that so leave your band at home yeah. right and just enjoy nature while yes. you're out there appreciate it and respect it and know before you eat it's one of my favorite pages of each of the each of the mushroom that he talks about in the book have this know before you eat and it talks about what where and when they occur but also the field id checklist that all of these must be correct before you attempt to eat it. And uh, that goes back to our bold and old mushroom hunters. Yes, so not too many of them left, That's <laughs> bold right. and old. But we are so glad you joined us today in this lovely Wellfield Botanic Garden with Eric Garden and me. So remember, good food, good, good mushroom food, and good books and good friends make for a great life. So join us again. Any final word from you? Go out and explore nature. Yes, yes. Come out here and come to the well field. We'll see you next time.
This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.